Okay, well, I'm going to record um, myself. The uh, recording will start in just a moment. Well, the recording has started. What I want to do is um, a picture. I'm going to show you how to paint a picture. Mostly the reason for doing this picture, sorry, I'm looking for my button here to push, is uh, to show you how to paint ripped jeans. Robin had told me that um, it was a good subject and you guys might like seeing it. So I'm going to use my iPad and I'm going to use my Procreate program. This is Procreate. And I'm going to start with a um, um, a, 21, a 27 by 21 inch um, canvas. Now, just so you know, this is not 27 by 21. If you're not familiar with the uh, the whole idea of digital is you you tell it how big you want it. So here's my ruler. So the the screen itself is only uh, let's see, ten across by what seven and a half or so. But the this the picture the the uh, canvas is essentially twenty seven by twenty one. I want to show you something here first. Um, you go to the canvas dimensions, and um, here we are, dimensions. Okay, so can you see that? 27 inches by 21 inches. 300 DPI, dots per inch. It's important to know. This is important too. I think the rule of thumb is to make sure one side is at least 5,000 pixels, and then you will end up with a really nice uh, quality a piece of digital artwork that can be printed most sizes uh, the maybe not the size of a billboard but even the size of a billboard would probably work because people would be seeing it from a distance uh, you get the idea so what I want to do is I want to draw and paint um, a girl wearing uh, ripped jeans ripped jeans are, are a thing aren't they so I think what I'll do is I'm going to make the the um, the background color. Let me think about this for a second. Um, what would be the opposite of this? It would be like this, like a dark gray. Maybe not quite so dark. I'll make it a light gray. Okay, so that's going to be the color of the paper, so to speak. All right, all right. Let's get started. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do this in um, gouache. So let's use gouache. I might end up uh, mixing it with other brushes, but I'm going to start with the gouache. And let's just kind of rough sketch in the girl first, and then we'll take it from there. So I'm trying to get, um, she looks like she's got a, a skin tone that looks on the brown side. Now this is the uh, well, this is the Apple Pencil, by the way, but the Apple Pencil only paints and draws what you tell it to, and I'm telling it to paint like a gouache brush. Over here, this is what makes the uh, the point bigger and smaller. You see that thing getting bigger and smaller, and this over here changes the opacity, so it makes it even more opaque or less opaque. Okay, so I'm going to make it about that size. I'm just going to sketch in the girl. Very, very rough. Maybe, maybe make it a little bigger. Maybe, maybe I should make her a little darker too. Make it, it makes like it so I can see it better. Okay, just a little bit darker and let's see like here and I may end up making her larger, but this is what I got right now. I'm looking at a, a reference photo on my computer screen, which is to my left. Okay. Got this this little shape she's got going here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to make it bigger. I just wanted to. Sketch it down, see what it looks like. Mm. 
and you see I'm, I'm scrubbing it in really I'm not using brush strokes like this I'm just kind of rubbing it keep without lifting it off the the uh, iPad so yeah she's she's sitting by the way the girl I, I wanted her to be not standing only because I wanted to be able to fit her in you know, if a standing pose would have been probably a little bit I mean it wouldn't have been harder or easier it's just it's just that it would have been less of a composition I think so I wanted to have her like this okay let's see if I got it right okay now let's take that whole thing and make it a little bit larger there's not a whole lot of room to make it much larger but, but there she is whoops whoops I, I want to make her larger well I don't think I'm gonna be able to I'm gonna to have to leave it like that you see I made a mistake right there so let's take the eraser and I got it set on uh, airbrush so the airbrush eraser will get rid of that and now let's now let's look at her I don't, I don't know if you can tell what I did there but this would be her head this is her right shoulder and her arm goes down here and this is her right leg and her knee bends here goes down and she's got her foot kind of on her toes she's sitting on a bench I'll go ahead and put the bench in there too and uh, and this arm goes there's her leg right here and there's her arm there's her hair okay so now we're gonna try to fill her in so we want to make sure we paint the girl and we also want to make sure we paint um, the main thing I'm doing here is the blue jeans the ripped blue jeans but just so you get an idea there's the rough sketch of the girl so let's go to her head now her face and try to make that make sense so what I think I'm gonna do is take a lighter tone here and kind of get this this side of her again I'm using the gouache paint gouache behaves um, digitally gouache behaves like like regular gouache except of obviously it's not going to be running um, you could use regular gouache very similar to the way you would use water paint where regular gouache is very much like water paint but the difference is regular gouache can have a um, an opaque um, you, you can use it in an opaque way so you can paint over it whereas with watercolor typically you are going to be um, having to remember what parts of the paper you want to show through because the paper is the white on most watercolor paintings with gouache you can paint um, whatever colors you want to paint you see so and then and then if you don't have if the white paper doesn't show through for whatever reason you can always uh, paint um, the white on it whereas you can't really do that with uh, watercolor so I'm just trying to rough sketch I'm still in the rough stages of this um, I get this girl here I don't know if you can see the girl yet I'll do an outline here of her hair it looks like it comes up and then goes down here okay her eyebrow her other eyebrow okay I 
Yeah, I don't really want to make this look cartoonish. I want this to look as real as possible. A lot of times with gouache, you can make things look very realistic. Um, real, real gouache or digital gouache. It's all. It's it's an amazing medium in the real, in traditional and in digital. Okay. There's hair and then there's shadow over here. So I'm going to make sure I get that right. Excuse me if I don't talk the whole way through. I was debating about whether I should narrate this while I do it or narrate it after the fact. And I chose to narrate it while I'm doing it. And the only problem with that is I'm probably going to have some spots where I don't say anything. I'll try to try to not do that. Okay, let me get her mouth now. Everything is fixable. Make this a little bit bigger. It's a little too big. Get this hair darker. Get this light color again over here. Some of the darker tones here. Um, just scribbling here. I can always fix things later on. With it's real paint, you can fix things, and if it's digital, you can fix things. It's everything's fixable. Okay, let me get the dark again. 
Let's, let's make her eyes look a little bit better than that. Let's see if I can get it to look better. Yeah, I'm doing all this just to show you how to do um, blue jeans. <laughs> so the whole idea is just to get to the blue jeans. We'll get to them. I just thought it would be better to do an actual person and not just the blue jeans. I, th I guess that would be okay to do that, but it just seems to make more sense to try to do an actual picture and and perhaps it'd be easier for you to to see it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I could be wrong about a lot of stuff. Okay. Making this a little bit darker here. The shadow on her nose. Just going for the different shades to make her face look realistic, look believable. for her lips, a little bit slightly on the redder side. Let's see if we can get a little hint of reflection in her eyes. There's something darker here. It's very much drawing uh, in a painterly way, I guess you could say.
get some darker darker tones here on the side fill it in okay I want to be able to differentiate between her hair and her face so let me kind of look at it from a distance here Okay, now her hair is obviously not going to be one flat color like that, so we want to fix that a little bit. Give it a little wave. She's got her hair that's coming way down here. She's got very long hair. And we'll probably come back to it. Get some more of these browns in here for her. The shadows on her neck. Okay, well, we're going to come back to her hair. Let's um, now work on her shoulders. Let's see. Just like that. Just a hint of a shoulder right there. Okay. And then over here, let's see, she's got a, her top, goes like this. And then her shoulder, let's go for some of these light, light colors here. Her shoulder comes out here, her muscles in her arm. Okay, I just need that light there so I could have a reference. get some of those these brown orange tones I will fill in some of the colors that are missing and make it a little bit darker brown Okay, let's get really dark here. I'm, I'm using somewhat of a limited palette. Um, if in if you were using real paint, if this was traditional paint, you would use limited uh, choices, limited c tubes of color. Um, in this case, you might use orange, and you wouldn't use black, but I am using black in here. But if it was traditional, I don't think you would. You'd probably use orange and, and green and red and the green would never be green the green would only be to um to desaturate the red that's what you would use the green for okay 
Okay. Let's go over here to this arm. Something's coming down like that. And we want to make sure we get. Contours of her body. It's important in the picture. You'd be surprised how how familiar we all are with human um, qualities, human physical qualities. We all we all can tell when something's not right in a painting. We can all tell something's not right. I'm probably going to have to add some darks and lights in that later on. Okay. Darken that a little bit. It's just to make her hair flowing across her shoulders a little bit more. Now that we got a shoulder in there. Okay, let's get some of those light colors now. And everything we do, everything I'm doing here, I, I try my best to get it right the first time, but usually I have to go back. Usually I have to go back to something. Let's see, make that a little darker. Let's see how far we want to go down with that. Her hmm. arms kind of touch each other down here. Okay, and then she's got some some skin showing over here. She's got the arms. I'm gonna try and do uh, again a rough rough sketching in of all this stuff. I'll come back to it. have exactly everything I need to know about it's hard to see it but I'm gonna go back to it when I get to it so now let, now let's start well one more thing I want to do here it's got a little bit of skin showing here it's important and then the black this piece of the shirt it's just a little bit of shirts lifting a little bit that's important because it's got a sexiness to it don't want to avoid the sexy stuff Right now, you see what I did, I changed to blue. I want to go very dark blue. Dark blue is not that different than dark brown um, in the grand scheme of things. But I'm going to sketch it in now because this is where her blue jeans um, come to play. And of course, they're torn blue jeans. So, so I'm just going to sketch this in. It's darker than that. Dark blue, very dark blue. Okay, and over here it's very light blue because this is where the light is hitting. Okay, and then over here some dark blue again where the sh shadow is by her arm. Okay, over here she's got a shadow from her arm going on that leg. Okay. Um, let's get the light blue over here for this part of the, the blue jeans. Let's see. Looks like it goes down around here. Okay. Whoops, hit my microphone. 
Sorry. All right, let's uh, let's look at her now. Do I do think her head is a little bit too? Do you think it's a little bit too big? I'm gonna squish her head up a little bit. I hope I don't mess things up too bad. What I'm gonna do is lasso it. I wanted to show you this kind of thing anyway. So what I take is the distort feature, and I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. Yeah, that looks more natural, I think. I think I made her head a little bit too elongated. That looks natural. Okay. Let's get back to sketching in the, the rough stuff. Um, let's see. So this portion of her, of her leg. I will say that I am rushing. And I'm doing that because... I know you're watching so that you can learn something and I don't want you to have to sit forever to, to learn stuff. Okay. But I'm sketching it in. Let's see. Let's get some of this light blue in here. You know what I probably can do? I can probably make this background a little bit darker. I think I'll do that. Let me make it more on the gray side. Okay, I think that's a better background. Not really sure. But I can, it's easier to see the light colors when I do that. So, let me put some of them in here. Okay. Let's go down to here. And then over here, she's got one shoe that's kind of on its side. Starting to look right here. What do you think? Let's get some of the skin tone. I'm going to sample the skin tone from up there. Use it down here. And then also down here. Okay. shoes here. Make the point a little smaller here. Get some of this. Okay, so let's um let's try and do some of this edging here for her knee. And he's poking through a hole in the jeans, and that's where we're going to get some of that ripped stuff from. And over here, she's got also rips in her jeans. Okay. We've got plenty of um, wrinkles and folds in the, in the denim. Okay, now let's get some of the, uh, let me fix this foot here. That's, I'm not so happy with this foot. Let me get some of that blue, dark blue over here. I'm going to take her leg and change it a little bit. So watch what I do here. Let's see what I can do here. Pull it out a little bit. I 
Yeah, that's okay. I just pulled it a little farther away. And I should probably do the same thing with this leg, too. It looks like it needs to be a little bit more off to the side here. Yeah, I think so. Now, if this was traditional paint, you know how to handle that, right? You just simply paint it over. Uh, that's the beauty of digital. You can uh, you can change it right there on the with with your tools, your tools. Okay, so I'm, I'm erasing some stuff now. That I have the eraser set on the um, airbrush. So you know what? I started to paint the bench she's sitting on. I think I'm gonna change my mind about putting that there because. Um, it would make more sense to to not do that and to to change it like after the fact. Okay, I'm just trying to get some of these um, lines and wrinkles and um, using the gouache, by the way, helps because it has this like I say very watercolor um, characteristics. And what we want to do is we want to make sure the shadows are very, very realistic looking. All right, let's get some of these light blue colors in here. back to that orange brown and then I'm going to erase what I did before for that shoe I'm going to repaint it in there because I didn't do it right shoe over here Make that shoe a little bigger. It's not the perfect shoe, but size is important, especially at this point. Make it uniform so it all gets big at the same size. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, let me put a few, uh, a few shoelaces in there. Let's get back to the rips. Let's look at the rips. The rips would show her skin tone coming through, so let's just go and borrow from the already existing skin tones. And over here, just a few rips up here too, a few places where the jeans are ripped at the top. Okay, let's get the dark areas for the shadow side of the of the jeans. Of the jeans, I didn't mean to say that. I mean to say of her skin. See, this is why I wasn't gonna 
narrate it while I did it, but I am. I'm doing it here. So, All right, now, as you know, the ripped blue jeans always have that very, very white. Whatever happens to jeans when they get frayed, they get white. So let's poke that in there a little bit, make the point smaller, and let's follow the the tear part of the jeans. Let's put a few tears up here. Okay, you see how that works? Let's put a few tears here. It's torn apart. All right. Um, now what I want to do, this is digital and rather than paint it like a second coat, look what you can do here. I want to show you something. This, this is everything I've done so far. Everything's on one layer. But what I want to do is I want to duplicate the layer. Wait, how do you do it again? I always have to remind myself. There's the word duplicate, you see? So you hit duplicate. Now you got two of them. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but it gets a little bit richer when there are two together. Oops. See, it's richer. You see it? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to put the two together. Merge them together. So now they're one. And let's go ahead and get rid of some of these marks. I wasn't thinking, I guess. And I'll erase some of these um, attempts to do uh, the bench. Let me try and get some of this stuff away from her top of her hair. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, that looks better. And down here along her arm. Well, the, you know what this is? I, f I just realized what that is. That's the, the first rough sketch I did. So the rough sketch was uh, just a placeholder more than anything. It's not unusual for me to do it that way. I'm trying to decide now if I want to show you like how to do the complete picture or did I show you enough because what I would do from here from this point forward is I would work this until I had the, the picture I want um, I probably need to give her a little bit more hair on top I think I think so I'm just gonna work it a little bit longer okay a little bit more hair in fact I could probably work on that hair a little bit yeah let's work on the hair a little bit let's just work on her okay let's um Let's take some of these areas and make them darker where the sun, where the light isn't hitting her at all. It's completely hidden. And we'll go ahead and make some, some reflecting areas. I'll give her a little bit wavy hair, I think. I can't really tell in the picture I'm looking at. It's, it's all dark, but just give it a little bit wavy hair. Now, I said earlier that I might mix the um, the brushes. I, I might do that. All right, let's finish this area here. Let's look at this area right here and make it better. don't really have here is a defined area for her hands. 
And I think we can do that. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a separate layer. Because right now, I, I kind of like the way it looks. You like the composition. That composition, well, it's just the girl. You know what I should do? I think I can do this. Let's put it on the paper this way. Yeah. That way she's more of the composition. Yeah, that works. Oh, that's nice. And then I can add the, the background. Okay, I think I got that. Um, like I say, her hands aren't really there, so let's let's fix that part. But let's let's do it with a separate layer, just in case I mess up too bad. Okay, so let's take that light color right there, and let's work with it. Now we're on a separate layer, so we can't mess up too bad. I'm going to make it a little bit more red than it is. A little bit more red. I think that red makes the orange tone of her skin tone look warm. I'll take some dark areas, make this thinner. There we go. And her hand is down here. Her other hand is its very much in the shadow. The two hands. Make a little bit wider here. A little bigger. Okay, let's get some dark tones here. Let's darken the uh, the area in the blue part of her jeans. In this area here, make it a little bit darker. Let's make it less blue. Let's less saturated to bring it over this way, so it's darker and less saturated. Some of the very light colors here. So I'm just highlighting some of the folds in her jeans, some of the areas in her jeans that have a little bit more light hitting them than other places. And she's got this. The, you know, that seam that goes down the middle of the jeans, or the middle, down the leg of the jeans. Yeah, now the hands are still not defined. Let me see if I can do something about that. I don't want to worry about them too much, but looks like there's a thumb there. And some darkness over here, the other side of her hand. And this hand is sort of covered by that first hand. But it looks a little bit awkward, doesn't it? some of these lighter colors here.
Okay. All right, let's put that bench in there. So now I'll show you a digital trick I like to do. I, I'm going to tell you this, that if I was really painting a picture of this girl, I wouldn't be done. But I, again, I don't want to take up like so much time that it's impossible to watch this video. So what I want to do, here's a, here's a little trick. So I'm going to take, so there's that second layer, by the way. Let's compare the two. With it, without it. With it, with without it. See, see what I added there? It does make a difference. So let's merge those two together. Now we have one layer. Now let's take that layer and duplicate it again. Now this time it's not to make it richer. What I want to do is I want to turn off one of them, the bottom one. <clears throat> I want to sample the gray color that I've been working on top of. <clears throat> and then on this layer, I'm going to hit the alpha lock. And I don't know if you can see the little squares right there, but that means the alpha lock is on. What I'm going to do, are you think I'm crazy, right? You're going to see this. I'm going to paint over the whole girl. Just paint over her. Just kind of wipe her out. I'll show you why I'm doing this in a second. There's a very good reason for doing this. And you can't do this with traditional paint, obviously. With traditional paint, you have to think differently. You have to think, you have to think in terms of the background and the foreground, obviously. But you, you, you can't really separate the two and then work on one separate from the other, which is what you can do here. So now the girl's completely painted over. And I'm going to turn off that alpha lock. I'm going to remove the background. Now, you see what you see there? What do you see? You see the gray that I painted, but you see a lot of black showing through. It's not really black, it's transparent. So now you turn off the alpha lock, otherwise you can't paint on anything other than what was already painted on. And you color it in. You just make sure you get everything. You don't want to do too much close to the edge, because then it starts to really look funky. But if you just get them the stuff in the middle where there are gaps, like right here on her shoe, and right here on her leg by that torn jean. And yeah, now we have this, this beautiful little silhouette of the woman. Okay, now let's turn this, this layer back on and move this layer on top of that layer. And now there she is. Let's put the background in place. The reason I did that because now I can paint things behind her. Let me merge the two. Now I can paint things behind her without having to worry about them looking crappy. Okay? So let's put her on something. And I'm um, not going to worry too much about it. But let's make her sitting on a, a brown bench. And let's see how it looks. So now we're going to paint. On a, I'll make another layer and put that layer underneath her. And let's do this. Okay. Let's just hold it and make it a straight line. It'll, it'll do a bad self watch. See that? Isn't that cool? Try it one more time. Okay. I don't really like it, but there, that's good. Okay. Now let's move that down. It's too far up. Let's move it down there. Okay. Now let's work with this, um, with the shading on this thing. Let's make it darker over here. Darker over here. We'll make it. We don't want to make it all one color. Most things, except for walls, even walls and paintings, they don't have one color. It's always a mixture. Okay. Let's give some kind of color to the wall. I don't know, give it a light color over here. Let's make it a light color on one side and kind of drifting into a darker color on the other side of her. It's like she's in a in a an old bus station or something waiting for a bus or something. Okay. Let's just make that darker. And add some more light over here. Yeah, we're just going to do that. And then we're going to take this color that we used here. Okay. 
and we're going to darken some of it. Maybe it'll make it a little bit darker right there. Maybe she's casting a shadow on it. Okay. And then we're going to create a little bit of a light line. So that's kind of where the seat is. Right there. Let's make it straight. I guess that's about right. Alright, let's go ahead and put some uh, some lines, just some vertical lines, just so that it looks more like a more like a fabric of some sort. Put some light there. Some light there. And let's just hit a few more dark areas just to make it look like it's been around a while. All right, now we need another layer of dark. This is going to be, I guess, the front of the... Uh, okay, make it really dark here. Let's let it straighten itself out there. And we'll go for the next layer where she is okay make it maybe make it even darker than that because it's probably the underside. And a little bit of shadow. Make it look like a shadow. And let's get some grayish, I guess, similar to what we have on the side there. A little bit of green in it. Let's paint the whole floor. darker over there. Yeah. Whoops. That was a mistake. It was too big. Let's make it smaller. Okay, now we gotta take this color and we want to make it slightly darker so we have a shadow coming off of her foot. And you see how I can paint under it because it's a separate layer. And then I guess she would have maybe a little bit of shadow behind her right there. Wouldn't that make sense? She's got a little bit of a shadow of her own self. Okay, so now there she is. There's the composition, the girl sitting in the bus station or, or wherever. It is not a finished painting by any means. I'm going to double the background just so it's a little richer. And uh, merge them together. And the only other thing I want to show you that I would do is I would take um, another layer and put it over her. Now, I'm going to tell you this before I do it. I might not keep what I'm doing. Okay, so see right here, that little N? That means normal, I think, or natural or neutral. And what I want to do is I want to open that, and I want to scroll down to this one called multiply. Now, close it up, and now you see it's an M. That means multiply is set. Now what you do is you click here, and you click clipping mask. Okay, click that. Now, I'm going to bring a color and it's going to cover her but it won't cover the background so i think what i want to do is 
probably make it a warm color like this. I'm going to cover her with it. Now you see what it did? It darkened her. It made her darker. Now what I want to do is I want to take the, the brush and I'm going to go ahead and use an airbrush, the soft one. I'm going to make sure it's not too big. Let me see, make sure you can see what I'm doing here. It's about that size. Make sure it's not it, opaque. Make sure it's translucent. And let's Let's take that and let's brighten her face by erasing some of that stuff I just put on there. Just enough to give the illusion of light coming in on a different angle. Well, on the same angle, but just more dramatic. Just more dramatic. There's, a little bit of, there's that skin. And the whole purpose of doing this was to show you how I would do um, ripped jeans. But I thought it would be more fun to have an actual person in ripped jeans. Um, so now I'm, now I'm just erasing some of these areas I think would be getting more light. And I hope I can just demonstrate this right now. That little piece of skin shown right there under her shirt gets some more light. And there she is. There's the composition. I want to show you what happens when I turn that on and off. You see how bright she gets? Now those shadows are a little bit more dramatic. Is that the best way to say it? So now the last thing I want to do is I'm going to do three fingers and then hit copy all. Let it copy it. What it's doing is it's copying everything. Three fingers again and paste. Now the whole picture is being pasted on here. Okay? Now what I do here, you see, there it is. There's the layer. It's pasted on there. If I can do two of them, I will. Sometimes it won't let me. Okay, it, it allowed me. I'm going to turn one of them off. Now what I want to do, and this is just to experiment, over here, um, let's see if I can show you. Do you see this one that says uh, curves? Let's do that one. Now down here, I'm going to adjust some of the things. First, I'm going to do the gamma, which is kind of like lightening it and darkening it. So I think I don't really want to change it that much. Just maybe a little bit lighter. Let's see what happens when we mess with the reds. Oh, you see how it goes from warmer to cooler? Let's see what happens when we mess with the greens. Okay, I don't want to mess too much. Now the blues. Hmm, I kind of like that. And now watch this. This will allow me to, to show me that's the way it was. That's the way it is. That's the way it was. That's the way it is. So I'm going to turn that off. Now I have a decision to make. Which picture do I want to be the picture I keep? Um, so what I do is I come over here. That's the one I just adjusted. And that's the original one. Hmm. I think I like the original one better. So that's the original one. Okay. Well, that's it, kids. That's uh, the whole thing. Um, I'll put it up there at the end. Let's see if I have any mistakes I need to fix. I will, I will tell you this. Oh, yeah. See right there on her leg? See there's a, a, a break? Well, that has to be fixed. So let's go to um, where she is. Now, here's a good thing I didn't show you earlier. Let me use this. This is the, like the smudging tool or the blending tool. Um, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use it... Um, as an airbrush. I'm going to use it small. And what I'm going to do, what it does is it pushes the pixels around that are already there. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can close up that gap. Maybe even make her shoe reach where it should reach. It's just a tool. For, it's, if you were using um, paint and you wanted to smear it a little bit, you might use uh, water or turpentine. If you'd be using pastel, you would just smear it with your finger or with a uh, a tool, a smudging tool. Eh, just little things here and there. I might have some other mistakes here that I'm just going to ignore. Looks like that's a mistake right there. Um, but that's it. And I, and again, I just want to point out that I would not stop here. Normally, I I 
don't know how many minutes we've been recording, but my whole purpose of doing the video is to show you. I've had um, numerous people ask me, how do you do the art with um, the iPad with the Procreate? And so this is one way to show you. Um, I do have a couple of videos on my channel where I did take the whole thing. I think I got one of a fisherman. And you can look at that one if you want to see something that where I went from beginning to actual finished. I would consider this a sketch. I would consider this the the first rough draft. And if it was um, to be painted on an actual canvas, it would, it would work perfectly. If you were going to finish it on the digital, then you would do that. You would uh, just come back to it or, or just continue from where we are now. And you would just work on it until it was the way you want it to be. If this particular girl was somebody you knew, somebody whose likeness you wanted um, to capture um, authentically, um, accurately, you might spend a little more time. I don't think I caught the likeness exactly of the, uh, the reference photo that I was using. Um, I wasn't worried about it because I'm not trying to do a portrait of this particular girl. And one more thing I want to point out. Do you see these little areas? Like you can see right there and right there where the purple is showing through. Do you remember that was the background color? See if I turn them off how they look black? Because there's nothing there. And I could change that background color to something else. But since I was working with it, my eye was using that as a way to create a composition, create a work of art. And so in an actual painting, in traditional paint, I would do this all the time. And you let you let the complementary color in the background. You let it shine through. You let it bleed through. It helps. Um, it helps uh, accentuate. It helps. Uh, I don't know. It just helps. It's. It, you don't always have to do it. Sometimes I've. I have forgotten to do it, and then later on realized that the painting would have looked better if I did do it. I have also done the exact opposite, where I did it and I thought, you know, this probably would have looked better if I didn't have that complementary color on it. So, hey, and that's one reason why digital can be so useful. You can experiment, you can you can try things and um and uh, see how it might look, okay? All right. I'm not that good with this whole video thing. Looks like we've gone how many minutes? Looks like we've gone 1 hour. 1 hour and 9 minutes. So, Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. I love when I hear comments. So if you want to write something, that would be nice. And then uh, hopefully this helped you learn a little bit about painting ripped jeans. Okay. All right. See you later. Bye.